Marco, thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with me here on the Comscope stand at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Look, I know it's been a busy week for you all. Maybe just give me a little taste of what your customers are telling you, what you're hearing out on the show floor. Yes, I guess one of the big uh, themes uh, was probably artificial intelligence. We've seen a lot of it uh, around, the, around the show and how it can be used, I guess, to, 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 incre to improve uh, processes and, uh, and lives and, uh, and so on. Uh, from our perspective, probably overrun was the was the key theme and the key thing that customers uh, were asking us uh, were asking us about. Uh, we've been taking overrun into the indoor uh, indoor space, and uh, we had a lot of interest in uh, on that on that front. Yeah, open ran really a standout theme for me too, and uh, it's been a long road to get these interfaces opened up to get the interoperability work done. Uh, you know, what are your expectations? It seems like we're at kind of an inflection point. We've seen some really big announcements from some major carriers, not just in yes. Greenfield, but in Brownfield. Yes. So what do you think it's going to happen next? Uh, we, uh, we are seeing a, a big acceleration of uh, deploying Oran and uh, interest. There was a little bit of resistance over the past couple of years, but we've seen it really uh, taking off now. And uh, we think it will make, uh, I guess, deploying f for us specifically indoor systems much, much faster and much more, uh, much more, efficient, much more efficient. So. There's, uh, there's very good reasons why this uh, should be adopted uh, and, uh, and uh, we will see an acceleration of it. Yeah, and then maybe just like kind of a big 5G question here, but if we assume a 10-year generational cycle for 5G, we're at the midpoint. You know, what are the success stories that jump out to you from the past five years? We've, uh, we've seen it, uh, I guess, starting a little, bit, uh, a little bit slow and accelerating over the, over the years. I mean, we, we've currently got a huge amount of uh, deployments across, uh, across the world. Specifically, in my region in, uh, in Europe, we've seen uh, all, all the stadiums being upgraded for 5G, for 5G systems. So there's a lot of interest in that, uh, in that space, and uh, there's a lot of uptake on uh, services based on, uh, on 5G. And some of the key sporting events that are, uh, will be happening uh, this summer, I think, will, uh, will leverage a lot of those uh, 5G capabilities that we've uh, we've introduced. And then the other side of that question, I guess, is, uh, you know, operators are going through a lot of modernization, a lot of upgrades to the 5G systems that they've already put in place. And I guess the big next step is going to be going from NSA to standalone mode of operation. Yes. So, I mean, it feels like the best is yet to come, but I mean, what's got you excited for the next five years? De definitely the move from uh, non-standalone to standalone networks will, uh, will, make a, will make a difference. We're sort of... Uh, halfway through the 5G, 5G cycle. To fully exploit some of the benefits of 5G, you really need a, a fully standalone, uh, standalone network. So I think, yeah, it, it will take a while to, to get there, but we're, uh, we're moving in, uh, in that direction to fully exploit the capabilities of 5G. Excellent, Marco. I appreciate you taking the time to share Comscope's perspective with our audience. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.